Hello everybody, you are watching Edis English Literature. I am Ardhendu De. Today in this video lecture, I am going to read O. Henry's The Last Leap. We will find out the short story features and also render a vivid analysis of the topic of Christian myth and of course characterization. As you all know, O. Henry's story is multi-layered and has a magic ending so we'll find out what sort of magicality is there but first of all what is a short story in fact to be perfect short story neatness brevity and a significant incident or an aspect of character or an experience of some psychological moment is essential. By the very name, we find out that the story is in shorter form. But that shortness is nothing mechanical, but artistic. In fact, uh, within its short framework, it must have a beginning, a middle and an end. There must be completeness in its structure. All the elements, plot, character, dialogue, descriptions, and background must be connected with each other. Generally, a good story has a surprising end which bears a stamp of endlessness, you know. There is an infinite story pops up in our mind. So all these characteristics of a good short story that we can find out in, in such examples of the world literature are being fulfilled in this American short story writer O. Henry's The Last Leap. Most notably and most interestingly, uh, it has an ironic twist at the end that is surprising and at the same time striking to the readers. Old Bahram's bold self-sacrifice for the young John C. comes quite unexpectedly to us, but nonetheless convincing and admirable. The story is also a parable of Christian story of resurrection and sacrifice. The story begins in a, a leisurely manner with a sketchy background. The old Greenwich village in which painters come to set up their art studio has curious mage streets crisscrossing one another. A traveler loses the directions of the streets. This description of the streets has relevance to the story in which a strong and strange psychological morbidity is focused. I am just quoting few of the beginning lines by which you can grasp the very inflow the writing style of or Henry. Washington Square, the street have gone wild, they turn in different directions. They are broken into small pieces called places. One street goes across itself one or two times. A painter once discovered something possible and valuable about this street. The main theme is then introduced. It has two characters, Siv and John C. They met together suddenly at a hotel and found themselves sharing tasty chicory salad, bishop slips and painting. They become intimate friends and in a cheap rented house, two friends, Sui and John C set up a common studio. Sui and John C lived at the top of a building with three floors. One of these young men came from Miami and the other from California. They had met at a restaurant of 8th Street. They had been discovered that they liked the same kind of art, the same kind of food and the same kind of clothes. So they decided to live and work together. The humorous beginning adds the attention of the readers and relieves the tension that awaits them but then it states Mr. Pneumonia was approaching. Mr. Pneumonia was not a nice old gentleman. A nice old gentleman would not hurt 
quick little woman from California, but pneumonia touched John C. with his cold fingers. They lay on her bed almost without moving and she looked through the window at the wall of the house next to hers. So after a serial comic introduction comes the central situation. John C. is attacked with pneumonia. She gradually becomes weak in body and mind and the doctor comes for a visit. Here is the doctor's view conversation I am quoting. She has a very small chance, he said. She has a chance if she wants to live. If people don't want to live, I can't do much for them. Your little lady has decided that she is not going to get well. Is there something that is troubling her? She replied she always wanted to go to Italy and paint a picture of the Bay of Naples. Paint? Not, not paint. Uh, is there anything worth being troubled about a man? A man? Said Sui. Is a man worth? No, doctor. There is not a man. The doctor's sweet conversation truly reveals that doctor has found out uh, that uh, John C is having some problem, uh, if not physical, mental. In fact, she is possessed with a death wish. There is an IV vine on the ear near the John C's window. She looks at the window and counts the leaves backward and uh, that were falling and associates her longevity with the fall of leaves. She has an uncanny feeling that her life will end with the fall of the last leaf of the ivy creepers. The doctor tells me that her life depends on her wish to live. The medicine is no cure here. In fact, um, psychological boosting is the only cure doctor finds. John C. does not like eating and drinking. She only looks vacantly at the window, counting the number of leaves falling. Her friend Sui tries to divert her mind from the window. She sits by her for painting so that she will be inspired to live for painting. She offers her truth, wine, meal, and she tries to take her mind from death wish, but she cannot succeed. The strange fancy that takes hold of her mind cannot be removed. So this is the very complication of the story where John C. is dragging herself or pulling herself towards death wish at Sui as a broad humanity. She is reaching to John C. Even though she is a mere friend, no blood relation, she is having her will to cure her from that deadly wishes or from that deadly disease, pneumonia. John C. says, I want to see the last leaf fall. I have done enough waiting. I have done enough thinking. I want to go sailing down, down, like one of those leaves. She tells this strange fancy of John C. to the old painter Baron, the very interesting character in this story, who lives downstairs and now he comes to an old model for Sui. As a painter, he is a failure, but he has the ambition to paint a masterpiece, El Dorado. Or that magnum opus. Baram loves these two young painters and protects them as guardians. He dismisses this fancy as foolish. He comes upstairs with Sui to pose her to pose as her model. He comes upstairs with Sui to pose as her model for the old hermit miner. A persistent cold rain is falling mingled with snow. The weather is going bad to ours. Next morning, John C. asked Sui to draw up the green screen of the window. To their surprise, they find the last leaf standing out against the brick wall in spite of the beating rain and the fierce gust of wind throughout the night. So what happened? What happened? The, the whole night has been hostile one. In spite of that, the single leaf did not fall. The last leaf survives the rain and wind. After all, seeing that the last leaf survives, John's wish to live revives by the very force of 
that standing leaves. Throughout the day and the next night, the leaf clings to its stem and the wall. John C. considers her a bad girl to think of death. The last leaf continues to live and so she will live. The calls for food assures herself that one day she will paint her masterpiece, the Bay of Naples. She is declared out of danger by the doctor after two days. Then there is the characteristic twist, typically O. Henry's. The mystery is clear. On the dreadful stormy night, old Vehram painted the green leaf on the stem, caught pneumonia and died. That is why it neither moves nor flutter. The painted leaf has given the illusion of living leaf and John C. had caught back her urge to live. John C. is out of danger, but bad man dies of pneumonia. Painting made in sufferings and saves the life of morbid John C. A triumph over death. Life is immortalized by the touch of art. This ironic twist to the plot makes the story so interesting. It comes so unexpectedly, it convincing with a delightful tragic comic note. She tells everything to John C. Look out the window, dear, at the last leaf on the wall. Didn't you wonder why it never moved when the wind was blowing? Oh, my dear, it is Batman's great masterpiece. He painted it. He painted it there the night that the last leaf fell. Most of O. Henry's stories are near parables. And this great story touches us one of the life's most important lesson to be helpful, to be generous. Siri, for her part, went out of her way to help John C. feel better. And she made sure she was never alone. John C. had pneumonia and her condition was deteriorating day by day to the point that she believed she would die when the last leaf fall. The last leaf was the reason why John C. thought she was dying and the last leaf was the reason why Mr. Berman died. Thus the narrative has the title The Last Leaf. So it is very important but the last leaf also symbolizes the last hope. The superstitious notion of John C is that when the last leaf falls, she must go too. Sui and Mr. Behrman took two different ways to cure John C. See you the doctor's way of care, advices, and Mr. Behram took the way of an artist. You know the result. Art cures those which the doctors fail. An ironic twist at the end that is surprising and at the same time striking to us. Mr. Berman's bold self-sacrifice for the young John C. comes unexpectedly to the readers, but nonetheless convincing and admirable. Like Christ's resurrection and sacrifice, Berman rejuvenates the dying poor soul of John C. And that is the very mirth of the story and that is the very heartline of the story. So I think you have got the points and understand a bit the story of O. Henry's The Last Leap. But you must acknowledge the very underlying theme of this story as if a theme of everybody's life. There is everywhere a chance of recovery. There is everywhere a ray of hope. That hope is spiritual one. That hope is from human touch. That hope is from the touch of artistry also. So with that hope that you will always be helpful to others and be a comrade in everybody's need. I say goodbye for now. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel to get this kind of post. And your likes, comments and sharing will boost my video lectures in future course. Thank you. Bye bye.